I'm on my way uh, to see a friend uh, who's a new acquaintance of mine, uh, somebody I met on one of the Facebook groups, one of the beekeeping Facebook groups. Uh, I put out a, uh, uh, a call out on some of the groups to see if anybody had some spare drawn out frames that I could use in my sworn traps um, because you know since I'm starting over I don't have any uh, you know drawn pre-drawn out frames to utilize um, you know I put out a call to get uh, to see if anybody had some spare frames and uh, this gentleman his name is uh, Pete Greegley at least I think that's how I pronounce his name およそ2 0 0メートル先右方向です次に右方向です Hey Pete, how you doing? Good to meet you. Thanks. I appreciate you letting me come over and take a look at your bees. No problem. Yeah, so let's get to it. Hi, I'm Scott McPherson, and this is Beekeeping from Scratch, where it's about the bees. You like these acorn ferns? They draw them out fast, man. Really? They're better being, they're 5.2, you know? I don't know how you are about small cell, but. Oh, no, well, I'm, I'm foundationless, so. By default, I'm small cell. <laughs> well, I mean, if you talk to Solomon, right? Yeah. Solomon Parker. Yeah. Um, his definition of small cell is you use small cell foundation. Yeah. Right? But uh, uh, I like to think foundationless is small cell anyway. Well, you know what I mean? Okay, I'm going to show you, <laughs> this. This is, uh, so these are mediums I put in a deep. Yeah, sure. But, but you could see. Oh yeah, much smaller. Yeah. See, these are like that's like this stuff's like four seven, four six. Yeah. And this this is five two. Yeah, and even see, there's a few here. It looks like there might even be as low as four four yeah. down here. Yep. Yep. No. Oh. So that's pretty cool. Crazy that they they got five two here, but when they're drawn their own, they drew. Yeah. Small. I mean, look how small that is, you know. Yeah. There's some teeny stuff on the bottom. When I was uh, keeping bees in my warehouse, you could see that it went from larger to smaller as mm -hmm. the comb was kind of going down. Yeah, yeah. I say where, I know it's waré and all that, but it's just a habit. Yeah, you can I mean, take whatever you want. There's a... Uh... You, you pick what it is, you know, it, it, they can even be the worst combs. I brought you some um, empty frames, yeah. you know, to replace them so that you had the frames and you weren't out equipment, but the only ones um, I'm... It's very kind to you, you know? The only ones I'm worried about keeping are these. Because i got to cut those out for my... Uh, I got okay. a land hive I'm using this year in a... Okay. Kenyan top bar over there. So oh, really? Where? Oh, the blue one. Yeah. I see it. Yeah. No idea. Oh, man, you want me to put these down in the box here? Yeah. So they're nice wired, so yeah. they'll they'll draw the found, they'll draw the comb right yeah. through the wire. Yeah, I, I just started doing found, I started doing a little foundationless last year, and then um, transferring. Be doing all foundationless, hopefully next few years. Right on. So you started beekeeping with a, a fellow from Russia? Is that what you said? Yeah, who works works with us? Yeah. Nice. And they're bringing in some pollen. Oh yeah, heavy. These are nice dark bees. Yep. Nice. Yeah. So these me believe there's got to be something you know, around here somewhere. Yeah. Right. Yeah. As much as people around here in the club say there's nothing around here. Oh, both. Not, they, they say good. I tell them that I'm going to try trapping and stuff, but they, they're they like, 
good look, man. I'm try it. doesn't get anything. And... There's bees everywhere, you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. yeah. I know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, I have an Italian package that I got, and they go off and make their own queen, and they come back black. Yeah. Know? If the Italians were isolated, which obviously they're not, right? Yeah, yeah. But if they were isolated, they would still tend towards darkness over a few generations. Really? Yep. Oh, yep. I didn't know yeah. That. These guys are strong too. Look at these guys. It's cool. Something yellow coming in though. Yeah. I don't wonder if it's uh, early dandelion or. I don't know. Jet. The only stuff I've seen is maple, a little maple here and there, and then skunk, a bunch of skunk cabbage down this valley here. Uh, you know what? I don't know what color skunk cabbage is. I think it's like a pale yellow. Well, I've never kept bees where we had skunk cabbage. Oh, this really? is my first year in a skunk cabbage territory. Have you ever seen them when they sprout? Oh, yeah. They're... No, they're all over my yeah. house. But uh, I've never kept bees here. Yeah. Well, I kept bees in Norwalk, Connecticut, but I was a kid and I didn't pay it. I didn't know anything about what was around, you know. <laughs> that one over there is pretty defensive, so. That one is? Yeah. So I did the Kirk Webster. Oh, the sack on top? Yep. Nice. Um, so far, it's been like the best. Nice strong hive coming out of winter. Pete's got some nice bees here. Now these look like they're leaning more towards the Italian side, huh? Yeah. Those actually got split from the uh, that new better bees. Oh right, okay. So maybe they raised a queen from uh, one of the eggs before the new Carniolan queen started laying? Uh, maybe? May, uh, maybe, yeah. Uh. Oh, they're nice. Yeah. They're nice and gentle. Yeah, they're, these aren't too bad, yeah. Just peel it gently so you're not doing a big old rip, yeah. you know? <laughs> Look at those. You got bees all the way to the top. Yeah. This thing needs a super already. Yeah. Look at that. Nothing never fed them. Nothing. That's awesome. Yeah, that's that's perfect. And those bees are right up there, right up to the top. Yeah. Mm, fantastic. Nice gentle bees. Yeah, they're not they're not bad. They're pretty good. A little bit of a pop there. Yeah. Just lay it down, they'll move down. They'll move out of the way. They're healthy, they're uh so do you have a quilt that you put on top, or what is the, uh, what's on, is there anything inside the, uh, it's foam. oh, foam, okay. It's foam. Yeah, okay. Well, it's still, a lot of people, when they use a, a top, oh, when they use a top like this, you know, they put a quilt over the top of it, you know. Over to, the top of this? Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. I did. Well, usually people who use a quilt, you have to put one of these to it, otherwise the bottom of your quilt gets stuck to the bottom yeah. of the top, the top of the top bars, you know. I used quilts on that. The two that died. The two that died. <laughs> that figures. And uh, so I'm far, actually a good. Fa I'm a fan of quilts, but I experimented with this this year. Yeah. And they. I mean. Well, this probably does part of the job because it allows the uh, moisture to wick out yep. towards the edge of the, uh, yep. you know, towards the edge of the hive. And I was reading Kirk Webster's uh, website, and he said, I don't know if it's when, so it'd be after the the solstice that he. Uh, Killed a cornerback to let 
some moisture once they start rearing just a little bit of brood. Yeah, sure. Just a little bit more out, huh? Yeah. Nice. So that's what I did. Followed Give him him. almost a little bit of an upper entrance, too. Yeah. I, I uh, followed what he did. Those are my two that survived. Nice. Yeah, but there's so, so many variables. You can't you, you can't be sure that that's what well, it was. Yeah. You know what they I mean? Could, genetics. Yeah, 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 yeah. I knew they were gonna die. They actually survived till last week. Oh no, that's a shame. The Italian package. Yeah. yeah, that's a nice hive. That's a real nice hive right there. You said these guys are a little crabby though, huh? Oh, they are. <laughs> they are. They also don't look like they're as busy as the other five. I mean, they're doing well. They were. But they're not early. as busy. A little bit less traffic, you know? Yeah. Good now, way. these guys got some darker bees in them. I see some yellow bees, too, but... Yeah, it's a mix. Those are mostly some darker. really dark bees coming out of there. You thinking I should back off when you open this one up, or you think I'm all right? Uh, oh, we'll see, huh? They might be all right. Oh, they... Oh, I can hear their... Uh, I can hear them buzzing against the uh, sack. Yeah, they're a little more inquisitive. Yeah, look at that. That's still a nice, healthy hive. Not quite as full. It didn't. They're not all the way over here to the edge here, but into the center of the hive. They're nice and strong. That's a. That's another. That's another good strong hive. You girls remember me, huh? I remember you, huh? Yeah, they, so I split them, they swarmed, and uh, they produced a good almost 80 pounds honey. When you split them, did they have queen cells already? Yes, that's why I split them. Yeah, well, and then they, I must have missed one and they, swar they swarmed after that. You could see they had a little more problems with moisture, how they had some... Uh, mm -hmm. Wrinkled up a bit there, huh? Yeah. When I break these girls apart, they come at me hard. Really? Yeah. Yep. Well, you'll probably like your top bar hive because yeah. just because you're opening up with just a little bit at a time. You're not looking at the whole hive at once, you know. Might if I take a look at your TBH? Yeah. That's a heavy top, huh? Yep. Oh, so you put a kerf in your top bars, huh? Oh, yeah. Nice. Okay, starter strip. Not strips. Uh, just popsicle, popsicle strips. Sticks. Yeah. They, you know, they work a little bit, but if you don't, the only, the only problem with top bar hives is if you really don't stay on top of the yeah. bees, that comb will end up in places you had yeah. no idea it was going. So. All right, so you're drilling on the side entry. Oh, so you've had bees in here before. I could, no, I actually didn't, so. What is all that? Propolis. Yeah, where'd that come from? I rubbed it in there. Aha. Uh -huh. So, and I made adapters. I put these in my langs, let them draw it out. So they had some comb to start on. Of course, okay. they, they drew freaking drone comb, so. Well, <laughs> it is what it is. So I gotta, I'm gonna attach, cut one of those pieces out and attach it in here. But yeah, it's a, I rub a bunch of propolis and uh, it's a two by 12 of solid oak I had laying around. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So it's, yeah, it's, I know it's, he it's heavy as hell. There's <laughs> many different dimensions to make them, you know? So what is, what is this across here? <sighs> So it's like about 16 across? A little less. A little 15, 14? Yeah, around, I think 14. Maybe eight and a half deep. It's a little deeper than like Les Crowder's, you know, yeah. or Michael Bush. It's a little deeper, um, but it's yeah. not as wide. So I designed mine using a dimensional lumber. Mm -hmm. um, so I used a one by 12s, one by seven down here, and these were two by fours that I ripped and I ripped them uh, at one and a quarter inches mm -hmm. so that if they were this way it was one and a half inches if I laid them that way they were one and a quarter so I could do either oh, yeah. you know honeycomb honey or, or I could or honey yeah. or brood and all I had to do is just lay it this way or that and then I um, routed kind of a pyramid shape into the bottom of the of the bar yeah, yeah. you know what I mean yeah. with sales swarm trapping goes this year swarm trapping would be great and splitting from your you know your good yeah. hives and stuff yeah yeah. So, I, I'm not gonna. Survivors are survivors, whether they're yeah. swarms or splits. That's, yeah. you know, it doesn't matter. Yeah, so we'll see. I'm adding a couple of things, but we'll see.
Can I give you a hand there? That looks kind of heavy. No, it's actually... No, not so bad? Not too bad. It's just too and wide. you put the tin on top, so that's nice. Yep. So now you said you made some comfort styles, huh? Yeah, just one. I got it over. It's not his dimensions. Whose dimensions are they? No, I just made them. Oh, okay. But they're, but they're basically on the inside 12 by 12 inches-ish? Yes. Yep. But they're deeper. Instead of using the... Uh, Oh, nice. Yeah. Of so that's more the, of the people style. Yeah. Instead of using the skewers, it got dowels. Just ripped out some... Oh, those are dowels? Yeah. Or are they rips? No, they're they're oak dowels. Nice. Yeah, that'll work. We'll he just uses the skewers because they're yeah. cheap. Yeah. Super cheap, you but know? It's, but it's deeper, so I figured the skewers wouldn't be able to hold the weight of honey. Probably not. Um, and one of the reasons why... And I'm not speaking on behalf of Sam, but I think one of the reasons why he went shorter is because when the comb grows down, now this stick, when you pull it up out and it's no longer being supported yeah. on the sides of the hives, that you have a, more, a greater chance of the comb ripping, you yeah, know, yeah. zipping off of the top bar. Yeah. Yeah. So, let's uh, let me try out. Yeah, no, that'll be great. No, it's, I, I'm a big fan of uh, the people's hive. It's my favorite hive style. Yeah. It's just because I want to go uh, commercial again. Yeah. It's just not practical. I want to sell bees. Well, so yeah. that means I want to sell bees to people. And it's kind of hard to sell nukes to people when all your bees are in water. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> that's as simple as that. But that's my favorite hive style right there. Nice. Cool. Cool stuff. I converted garage to your honey house, huh? Yeah, I'm working on that. My basement has got... You know, we just bought the house two years ago. Yep. And... Uh, uh, you know, we're finally settled, settling in, so the basement's yeah. going to turn into a workshop and honey house. And That's the problem, is finding space for it. No. I've actually got a really huge basement, so I'm lucky in that regard. Yeah, I've got space. Oh, well, thanks for letting me see your bees. I really yeah, appreciate it. No problem. No Dude, problem. I really appreciate it. Thank you Anytime. very much. Anytime. Yeah, and uh, yeah, plan to do a lot of expansion this year, so we'll yeah. how it goes. Well, I, I've got 26 nukes waiting to fill up i mean oh. I, i'm only buying five nukes of bees from sam but uh oh you're getting them from sam yeah I'm, get, I'm getting them directly from sam so cool again yeah. once again i appreciate yeah. it man no problem hey man. have a great day well that was fun those are some pretty cool bees huh so on the way back to the car got a nice box of drawn out frames i'm happy about that and uh take the drive on home and so I'm on my way home now, um, left Pete's, I don't know, about a half hour, 45 minutes ago, and uh, I just wanted to say thank you, Pete, for inviting me up to see your bees. It was a, uh, it was a really good time. It's the first time I've been able to stick my head in a box of bees for uh, well, a few years now, so uh, uh, it was a real good time. I really appreciate it, the opportunity to look at those beautiful bees that you have there. Those hives are nice and strong. Those two hives are really nice and strong coming out of winter. And uh, my car is starting to smell like a beehive. And uh, it smells good. <laughs> I can't help it. But uh, I love the smell of bees. And obviously I don't have any bees in the car, but I've got some comb in the car. And uh, it just smells good and I really like it. So Pete, thank you. Uh, thanks for inviting me up. I had a really good time. Hope to uh, have you down maybe sometime over the summer. 